Chinese folk religion, Chinese popular religion or Han folk religion is the religious tradition of the Han Chinese, including veneration of forces of nature and ancestors, exorcism of harmful forces, and a belief in the rational order of nature which can be influenced by human beings and their rulers as well as spirits and gods. Worship is devoted to a multiplicity of gods and immortals shane shane, who can be deities of phenomena, of human behavior, or progenitors of lineages. Stories regarding some of these gods are collected into the body of Chinese mythology. By the 11th century Song period, these practices had been blended with Buddhist ideas of karma one's own doing and rebirth, and Taoist teachings about hierarchies of gods, to form the popular religious system which has lasted in many ways until the present day. Chinese religions have a variety of sources, local forms, founder backgrounds, and ritual and philosophical traditions. Despite this diversity, there is a common core that can be summarized as four theological, cosmological, and moral concepts, tian, tian heaven, the transcendent source of moral meaning, qi, qi the breath or energy that animates the universe, jingzu, jingzu the veneration of ancestors, and bao ying, bao ying moral reciprocity, together with two traditional concepts of fate and meaning, ming yun, ming yun the personal destiny or burgeoning, and yuan fen, yuan fen fateful coincidence. Good and bad chances and potential relationships, yin and yang yin yang is the polarity that describes the order of the universe, held in balance by the interaction of principles of growth shen and principles of waning gui, with yang act, usually preferred over yin receptiveness in common religion. Ling, ling Newman, or sacred is the medium. Of the two states and the inchoate order of creation, both the present-day government of China and the imperial dynasties of the Ming and Qing tolerated village popular religious cults if they bolstered social stability but suppressed or persecuted those that they feared would undermine it. After the fall of the empire in 1911, governments and elites opposed or attempted to eradicate folk religion in order to promote modern values, and many condemned feudal superstition. These conceptions of folk religion began to change in Taiwan in the late 20th century and in mainland China in the 21st. Many scholars now view folk religion in a positive light. In recent times Chinese folk religions are experiencing a revival in both mainland China and Taiwan. Some forms have received official understanding or recognition as a preservation of traditional Chinese culture, such as Mazuism and the Sanyi teaching in Fujian, Wangdi worship, and other forms of local worship, for example the Longwang, Pangu or Keishen worship. Terminology Chinese popular religion or folk religion or folk belief have long been used to indicate the local and communal religious life and complexities of Han local indigenous cults of China in English language academic literature, though the Chinese language historically has not had a concept or overarching name for this. In Chinese academic literature and common usage, folk religion min jian zong jiao, min jian zong jiao, refers to specific organized folk religious sects, folk beliefs. Min jian xin yang, min jian xin yang is a technical term with little usage outside the academia, in which it entered into usage at first among Taiwanese scholars from Japanese language during Japan's occupation 1895 and later between the 1990s and the early 21st century among mainland Chinese scholars. With the rise of the study of traditional cults and the creation of a government agency to give legal status to this religion, intellectuals and philosophers in China have proposed the adoption of a formal name in order to solve the terminological problems of confusion with folk religious sects and conceptualize a definite field for research and administration. The terms that have been proposed include Chinese native religion or Chinese indigenous religion, Min Su Zong Jiao, Min Su Zong Jiao. Chinese ethnic religion, Min Zhu Zhang Jiao, Min Zhu Zhang Jiao, or also simply Chinese religion, Zhang Hua Jiao, Zhang Hua Jiao, viewed as comparable to the usage of the term Hinduism for Indian religion and Shanxianism, Shen Xian Jiao, Shen Jin Jiao, religion of deities and immortals, partly inspired by the term Shenism, Shen Jiao, Shen Jiao, that was used in the 1950s by the anthropologist Alan J. A. Eliot. The Qing dynasty scholars Yao Wendong and Chen Jialin used the term Xinjia not referring to Shinto as a definite religious system, but to local Xin beliefs in Japan. Other definitions that have been used are folk cults, 
Min Jian Chong Bai Min Jian Chong Bai Spontaneous Religion Zi Fa Zong Jiao Zi Fa Zong Jiao Lived or Living Religion Sheng Huo Zong Jiao Sheng Wo Zong Jiao Local Religion De Fang Zong Jiao De Fang Zong Jiao and Diffused Religion Fen San Xing Zong Jiao Fen San Xing Zong Jiao Shen Dao Shen Dao Shen Dao The Way of the Gods is a term already used in the Yijing referring to the divine order of nature. Around the time of the spread of Buddhism in the Han period 206 BCE to 220 CE, it was used to distinguish the indigenous religion from the imported religion. Zhe Hong used it in his Baopuzi as a synonym for Taoism. The term was subsequently adopted in Japan in the 6th century as Shindo, later Shinto, with the same purpose of identification of the Japanese indigenous religion. In the 14th century, the Hongwu Emperor Taizu of the Ming Dynasty (1328–1398) used the term Shen Dao, clearly identifying the indigenous cults, which he strengthened and systematized Chinese universalism, not in the sense of universalism. That is a system of universal application. That is Tian in Chinese thought is a coinage of Jan Jakob Maria de Groot that refers to the metaphysical perspective that lies behind the Chinese religious tradition. De Groot calls Chinese universism, the ancient metaphysical view that serves as the basis of all classical Chinese thought. In universism, the three components of integrated universe understood epistemologically heaven, earth, and man, and understood ontologically taiji, the great beginning, the highest ultimate, yin and yang, are formed. Attributes Contemporary Chinese scholars have identified what they find to be the essential features of the folk or indigenous ethnic religion of China. According to Chen Xiaoyi, Shen Xiaoyi, local indigenous religion is the crucial factor for a harmonious religious ecology that is the balance of forces in a given community. Professor Han Bingfang Han Bingfang has called for a rectification of distorted names. Zheng distorted names are superstitious activities, mi xin huo dong or feudal superstition, feng jian mi xin that were derogatorily applied to the indigenous religion by leftist policies. Christian missionaries also used the label feudal superstition in order to undermine their religious competitor. Han calls for the acknowledgement of folk religion for what it really is, the core and soul of popular culture. Su Wen Hua De He Xin Yu Ling Hun According to Chen Jingguo Shen Jin Guo, folk religion is a core element of Chinese cultural and religious self-awareness. Wen Hua Zi Jue Xin Yang Zi Jue He has proposed a theoretical definition of Chinese indigenous religion in three inseparable attributes. San Wei Yi Ti apparently inspired to Tang Junyi's thought. Substance, T religiousness. Zong Zhao Xing function, Yang folkloricity. Min Su Xing quality, Shang Chineseness. Zhang Hua. Topic Overview. Topic Diversity and Unity. Chinese religious practices are diverse, varying from province to province and even from one village to another. For religious behavior is bound to local communities, kinship, and environments. In each setting, institution and ritual behavior assumes highly organized forms. Temples and the gods in them acquire symbolic character and perform specific functions involved in the everyday life of the local community. Local religion preserves aspects of natural beliefs such as totemism, animism, and shamanism. Chinese folk religion pervades all aspects of social life. Many scholars, following the lead of sociologist C.K. Young, see Chinese religion deeply embedded in family and civic life, rather than expressed in a separate organizational structure like a church. As in the West, deity or temple associations and lineage associations, pilgrimage associations and formalized prayers, rituals and expressions of virtues, are the common forms of organization of Chinese religion on the local level. Neither initiation rituals nor official membership into a church organization separate from one person's native identity are mandatory in order to be involved in religious activities. Contrary to institutional religions, Chinese religion does not require conversion for participation. The prime criterion for participation in Chinese folk religion is not to believe, 
in an official doctrine or dogma, but to belong to the local unit of Chinese religion, that is the association, the village, or the kinship, with their gods and rituals. Scholar Richard Madsen describes Chinese religion, adopting the definition of Tu Weiming, as characterized by imminent transcendence, grounded in a devotion to concrete humanity, focused on building moral community within concrete humanity, inextricably linked to the aforementioned question to find an appropriate name for Chinese religion, is the difficulty to define it or clearly outline its boundaries. Old Sinology, especially Western, tried to distinguish popular and alite traditions the latter being Confucianism and Taoism conceived as independent systems. Chinese Sinology later adopted another dichotomy which continues in contemporary studies, distinguishing folk beliefs and folk religion the latter referring to the doctrinal sects, many studies have pointed out that it is impossible to draw clear distinctions, and since the 1970s several Sinologists swung to the idea of a unified Chinese religion that would define the Chinese national identity, similarly to Hinduism for India and Shinto for Japan. Other Sinologists who have not espoused the idea of a unified national religion have studied Chinese religion as a system of meaning, or have brought further development in C.K. Yang's distinction between institutional religion and diffused religion, the former functioning as a separate body from other social institutions, and the latter intimately part of secular social institutions. History Imperial China by the Han Dynasty, Chinese religion mostly consisted of people organizing into shi shi group, body, local community altars who worshipped their godly principle. In many cases the Lord of the Shi was the god of the earth, and in others a deified virtuous person xian xian, immortal. Some cults such as that of Lu Zhang, a king in what is today Shandong, date back to this period, from the 3rd century on by the Northern Way, accompanying the spread of Buddhism in China, strong influences from the Indian subcontinent penetrated the Chinese indigenous religion. A cult of Ganesha elephant head god, is attested in the year 531. Pollination from Indian religions included processions of carts with images of gods or floats borne on shoulders, with musicians and chanting. 19th–20th century The Chinese folk religion was subject to persecution in the 19th and 20th centuries. Many local temples were destroyed during the Taiping Rebellion and the Boxer Rebellion in the late 1800s. After the Xinhai Revolution of 1911, most temples were turned to other uses or were destroyed, with a few changed into schools. During the Japanese invasion of China between 1937 and 1945 many temples were used as barracks by soldiers and destroyed in warfare. In the past, popular cults were regulated by imperial government policies, promoting certain deities while suppressing other ones. In the 20th century, with the decline of the empire, increasing urbanization and Western influence, the issue for the new intellectual class was no longer controlling unauthorized worship of unregistered gods, but became the delegitimization of folk religion as a superstitious obstacle to modernization. In 1904, a government regulation of the late empire approved for schools to be built through the confiscation of temple property. Various anti superstition campaigns followed. The Guomingdang government of the early republic intensified the suppression of local religion with the 1928 standards for retaining or abolishing gods and shrines. The policy abolished all cults of gods with the exception of human heroes such as Yu the Great, Guan Yu and Confucius. These policies were the background of those that were implemented in communist China after 1949. The Cultural Revolution between 1966 and 1976 of the Maoist period was the last systematic effort to destroy the folk religion. After 1978, Chinese folk religion started to rapidly revive in China, with millions of temples being rebuilt or built from scratch. Since the 1980s, the central government moved to a policy of benign neglect or wu wei, wu wei in regard to rural community life, and the local government's new regulatory relationship with local society is characterized by practical mutual dependence. These factors have given much space for popular religion to develop. 
In recent years, in some cases, local governments have taken an even positive and supportive attitude towards indigenous religion in the name of promoting cultural heritage. Instead of signaling the demise of traditional religion, China's economic development has brought a spiritual renewal. As its images and practices integrate the codes of Chinese culture, Chinese folk religion provides the Chinese people a means to face the challenges of modernization. Topic: <laughs> Texts Chinese religion draws from a vast heritage of sacred books, which according to the general worldview treat cosmology, history and mythology, mysticism and philosophy, as aspects of the same thing. Historically, the revolutionary shift toward a preference for textual transmission and text-based knowledge over long-standing oral traditions first becomes detectable in the first century CE. The spoken word, however, never lost its power. Rather than writing replacing the power of the spoken word, both existed side by side. Scriptures had to be recited and heard in order to be efficacious, and the limitations of written texts were acknowledged particularly in Taoism and folk religion. There are the classic books Jing Jing, Warp, such as the Confucian canon including the Four Books and Five Classics, Si Shu Wu Jing Si Shu Wu Jing and the Classic of Filial Piety. Xiao Jing Xiao Jing, then there are the Mozi, Mohism, the Huainanzi, the Shizi, and the Zunzi. The Interactions Between Heaven and Mankind is a set of Confucianized doctrines compiled in the Han Dynasty by Dong Zongshu, discussing politics in accordance with a personal Tian of whom mankind is viewed as the incarnation. Taoism has a separate body of philosophical, theological, and ritual literature, including the fundamental Tao Te Ching. Tao De Jing, Book of the Way and Its Virtue, the Tao Zhang Taoist Canon, the Li Zi and the Zhuangzi, and a great number of other texts either included or not within the Taoist Canon. Vernacular literature and the folk religious sects have produced a great body of popular mythological and theological literature, the Baowan, Baowan Precious Scrolls. Recent discovery of ancient books, such as the Guodian Texts, in the 1990s and the Wangdi Sijing, Huang Di Si Four Books of the Yellow Emperor in the 1970s has given rise to new interpretations of Chinese religion and new directions in its post-Maoist renewal. Many of these books overcome the dichotomy between Confucian and Taoist traditions. The Guodian texts include among others the Tai Yi Sheng Shui, Tai Yi Sheng Tui, The Great One Gives Birth to Water. Another book attributed to the Yellow Emperor is the Wang Di Yin Fujing. Huang Di Yin Fu Yellow Emperor's Book of the Hidden Symbol. Classical books of mythology include the Classic of Mountains and Seas, Shan Hai Jing Shan Hai Jing, the Record of Heretofore Lost Works, Shi Yi Ji Shi Yi Ji, the Peach Blossom Spring, Dao Hua Yuan Ji Tao Hua Wan Ji, the Investiture of the Gods, Feng Shen Yan Yi Feng Shen Yan Yi, and the Journey to the West. Among others. Topic: Core concepts of theology and cosmology. Fan and Chen summarize four spiritual, cosmological, and moral concepts: Tian, Tian, heaven, the source of moral meaning; Qi, Qi, the breath or substance of which all things are made; the practice of Jingzu, Jingzu, the veneration of ancestors; Bao Ying, Bao Ying, moral reciprocity. Topic. Tian, its Li and Qi Confucians, Taoists, and other schools of thought share basic concepts of Tian. Tian is both the physical heavens, the home of the sun, moon, and stars, and also the home of the gods and ancestors. Tian by extension is source of moral meaning, as seen in the political principle, Mandate of Heaven, which holds that Tian, responding to human virtue, grants the imperial family the right to rule and withdraws it when the dynasty declines in virtue. This creativity or virtue de, in humans is the potentiality to transcend the given conditions and act wisely and morally. Tian is therefore both transcendent and immanent. Tian is defined in many ways, with many names, the most widely known being Tidi Tai Di the Great Deity, and Shangdi Shangdi, the primordial deity. The concept of Shangdi is especially rooted in the tradition of the Shang Dynasty, which gave prominence to the worship of ancestral gods and cultural heroes. The primordial deity, or primordial emperor, 
was considered to be embodied in the human realm as the lineage of imperial power. D D is a term meaning deity or emperor. Latin imperator verb imperare making from within used either as a name of the primordial god or as a title of natural gods describing a principle that exerts a fatherly dominance over what it produces with the Zhou dynasty that preferred a religion focused on gods of nature Tian became a more abstract and impersonal idea of god a popular representation is the jade deity or jade emperor originally formulated by Taoists According to classical theology he manifests in five primary forms Wu Fang Shang Di Wu Fang Shang Di Five forms of the highest deity The Qi Qi is the breath or substance of which all things are made, including inanimate matter, the living beings, thought and gods. It is the continuum energy — matter. Stephen F. Tyser 1996 translates it as stuff of psychophysical stuff. Neo-Confucian thinkers such as Zhu Xi developed the idea of Li Li, the reason, order, of heaven, that is to say the pattern through which the Qi develops, that is the polarity of yin and yang. In Taoism the Tao Tao, way, denotes in one concept both the impersonal absolute Tian and its order of manifestation, Li. Topic. Yin and Yang, Gui and Shen. Yin yin and yang yang, whose root meanings respectively are shady and sunny or dark and light, are modes of manifestation of the qi, not material things in themselves. Yin is the qi in its dense, dark, sinking, wet, condensing mode, yang denotes the light, and the bright, rising, dry, expanding modality. Described as taiji, the great pole. They represent the polarity and complementarity that enlivens the cosmos. They can also be conceived as disorder and order, activity or passivity, with act yang usually preferred over receptiveness yin, the concept shen, shen, cognate of shen shen, extending, expanding, is translated as gods or spirits. There are Shane of nature, gods who were once people, such as the warrior Guan Gong, household gods, such as the stove god, as well as ancestral gods Zhu or Zuxian. In the domain of humanity the Shen is the psyche, or the power or agency within humans. They are intimately involved in the life of this world. As spirits of stars, mountains and streams, Shen exert a direct influence on things, making phenomena appear and things grow or extend themselves. An early Chinese dictionary, the Shuowen Jiezi by Xu Shen, explains that they are the spirits of heaven, and they draw out the ten thousand things. As forces of growth the gods are regarded as yang, opposed to a yin class of entities called gui, gui, cognate of gui gui, return, contraction, chaotic beings. A disciple of Zhu Xi noted that between heaven and earth there is no thing that does not consist of yin and yang, and there is no place where yin and yang are not found. Therefore there is no place where gods and spirits do not exist." The dragon is a symbol of yang, the principle of generation, in Taoist and Confucian thought, the supreme god and its order and the multiplicity of Shen are identified as one and the same. In the Yuan, a commentary to the Yijing, it is written that, one yin and one yang are called the Tao. The unfathomable change of yin and yang is called shen. In other texts, with a tradition going back to the Han period, the gods and spirits are explained to be names of yin and yang, forces of contraction and forces of growth, while in popular thought they have conscience and personality. Neo Confucian scholars tended to rationalize them. Zhu Xi wrote that they act according to the Li. Zhang Zai wrote that they are the inherent potential of the two ways of qi. Cheng Yi said that they are traces of the creative process. Chen Chun wrote that Shen and Gui are expansions and contractions, going and coming, of yin and yang. Qi. Topic: <laughs> Hun and Po, and Zhu and Xian. Like all things in matter, also humans have a soul that is a dialectic of Hun and Po, Hun Po respectively the yang spirit or mind, and the yin animal soul that is the body. 
Hun mind is the shen that gives a form to the qi of humans, and it develops through the po, stretching and moving intelligently in order to grasp things. The po is the feminine soul which controls the physiological and psychological activities of man, while the hun, the god attached to the vital breath, is the masculine soul that is totally independent of corporeal substance. The hun is virile, independent and perpetual, and as such it never allows itself to be limited in matter. Otherwise said, the po is the earthly di soul that goes downward, while the hun is the heavenly Tien soul that moves upward, to extend life to its full potential the human shen must be cultivated, resulting in ever clearer, more luminous states of being. It can transform in the pure intelligent breath of deities. In man there's no distinction between rationality and intuition, thinking and feeling, the human being is shin, shin mind heart. With death, while the Po returns to the earth and disappears, the Hun is thought to be pure awareness or Qi, and is the Shen to whom ancestral sacrifices are dedicated, the Shen of men who are properly cultivated and honored after their death are upheld ancestors and progenitors Zuxian Zhu Xian or simply Zhu Zhu. When ancestries aren't properly cultivated the world falls into disruption, and they become Gui. Ancestral worship is intertwined with totemism, as the earliest ancestors of an ethnic lineage are often represented as animals or associated to them. Ancestors are means of connection with the Tien, the primordial god which does not have form. As ancestors have form, they shape the destiny of humans. Ancestors who have had a significant impact in shaping the destiny of large groups of people, creators of genetic lineages or spiritual traditions, and historical leaders who have invented crafts and institutions for the wealth of the Chinese nation culture heroes, are exalted among the highest divine manifestations or immortal beings Xian Xian. .In fact, in the Chinese tradition there is no distinction between gods Shen and immortal beings Xian, transcendental principles and their bodily manifestations. Gods can incarnate with a human form and human beings can reach higher spiritual states by the right way of action, that is to say by emulating the order of heaven. Humans are considered one of the three aspects of a trinity sankai sankai, three powers. The three foundations of all being, specifically, men are the medium between heaven that engenders order and forms and earth which receives and nourishes them. Men are endowed with the role of completing creation. Bao Ying and Ming Yun The Chinese traditional concept of Bao Ying, reciprocity, retribution, or judgment, is inscribed in the cosmological view of an ordered world, in which all manifestations of being have an allotted span and destiny, and are rewarded according to the moral cosmic quality of their actions. It determines fate, as written in Zhou texts. On the doer of good, heaven sends down all blessings, and on the doer of evil, he sends down all calamities. Xu Jing Tangao The cosmic significance of Bao Ying is better understood by exploring other two traditional concepts of fate and meaning. Ming Yun, Ming Yun the personal destiny or given condition of a being in his world, in which Ming is life or right, the given status of life, and Yun defines both circumstance and individual choice. Ming is given and influenced by the transcendent force Tian, Tian that is the same as the divine right Tian Ming of ancient rulers as identified by Mencius. Personal destiny Ming Yun is thus perceived as both fixed as life itself and flexible, open-ended since the individual can choose how to behave in Bao Ying. Yuan Fen, Yuan Fen fateful coincidence, describing good and bad chances and potential relationships. Scholars K. S. Yang and D. Ho have analyzed the psychological advantages of this belief, assigning causality of both negative and positive events to Yuan Fen reduces the conflictual potential of guilt and pride, and preserves social harmony. Ming Yun and Yuan Fen are linked, because what appears on the surface to be chance, either positive or negative, is part of the deeper rhythm that shapes personal life based on how destiny is directed. Recognizing this connection has the result of making a person responsible for his or her actions, doing good for others spiritually improves oneself and contributes to the harmony between men and environmental gods and thus to the wealth of a human community. These three themes of the Chinese tradition moral reciprocity, personal destiny, fateful coincidence are completed by a fourth notion Wu, awareness of Bao Ying. 
The awareness of one's own given condition inscribed in the ordered world produces responsibility towards oneself and others. Awareness of Yuan Fen stirs to respond to events rather than resigning. Awareness may arrive as a gift, often unbidden, and then it evolves into a practice that the person intentionally follows. As part of the trinity of being, the three powers, humans are not totally submissive to spiritual force. While under the sway of spiritual forces, humans can actively engage with them, striving to change their own fate to prove the worth of their earthly life. In the Chinese traditional view of human destiny, the dichotomy between fatalism and optimism is overcome, human beings can shape their personal destiny to grasp their real worth in the transformation of the universe, seeing their place in the alliance with the gods and with heaven to surpass the constraints of the physical body and mind. Topic. Ling and Xinling — Holy and Newman In Chinese religion the concept of Ling, Ling is the equivalent of Holy and Newman. Shen in the meaning of spiritual is a synonym. The Yijing states that spiritual means not measured by yin and yang. Ling is the state of the medium of the bivalency yin yang, and thus it is identical with the inchoate order of creation. Things inspiring awe or wonder because they can't be fathomed as either yin or yang, because they cross or disrupt the polarity and therefore can't be conceptualized, are regarded as numinous. Entities possessing unusual spiritual characteristics, such as albino members of a species, beings that are part animal part human, or people who die in unusual ways such as suicide or on battlefields, are considered numinous. The notion of Xi'an Ling, Xi'an Ling variously translated as divine efficacy, virtue, or simply the Newman, is important for the relationship between men and gods. It describes the manifestation, activity, of the power of a god. Ling -chi -ling -chi divine energy, or effervescence. The evidence of the holy, the term Xi'an Ling may be interpreted as the god revealing his presence in a particular area and temple, through events that are perceived as extraordinary, miraculous. Divine power usually manifests in the presence of a wide public. The value of human deities Xi'an is judged according to his or her efficacy. The perceived effectiveness of a deity to protect or bless also determines how much he or she should be worshipped, how big a temple should be built in his or her honor, and what position in the broader pantheon he or she would attain. Zvitovskaya has studied how the incentive of temple restorations since the 1980s in northern China was triggered by numerous alleged instances of gods becoming active and returning, reclaiming their temples and place in society. She mentions the example of a Chenghuang temple in Yulin, Shaanxi, that was turned into a granary during the Cultural Revolution. It was restored to its original function in the 1980s after seeds stored within were always found to have rotted. This phenomenon, which locals attributed to the god Chenghuang, was taken a sign to empty his residence of grain and allow him back in. The Ling Qi, divine energy, is believed to accumulate in certain places, temples, making them holy. Temples with a longer history are considered holier than newly built ones, which still need to be filled by divine energy. Another example Zavidovskaya cites is the cult of the god Zhenwu in Kongluo Yu, Shaanxi. The god's temples were in ruins and the cult inactive until the mid 1990s, when a man with terminal cancer, in his last hope, prayed bye bye to Zhenwu. The man began to miraculously recover each passing day, and after a year he was completely healed. As thanksgiving, he organized an opera performance in the god's honor. A temporary altar with a statue of Zhenwu and a stage for the performance were set up in an open space at the foot of a mountain. During the course of the opera, large white snakes appeared, passive and unafraid of the people, seemingly watching the opera. The snakes were considered by locals to be incarnations of Zhenwu, come to watch the opera held in his honor. Within temples, it is common to see banners bearing the phrase. If the heart is sincere, the God will reveal his power. Xin Sheng Shen Ling Xin Cheng Shen Ling. The relationship between men and gods is an exchange of favor. This implies the belief that gods respond to the entreaties of the believer if his or her religious fervor is sincere. Cheng Shin Sheng Shen. If a person believes in the God's power with all his heart and expresses piety, the gods are confident in his faith and reveal their efficacious power. At the same time, for faith to strengthen in the devotee's heart, the deity has to prove his or her efficacy. 
in exchange for divine favors, a faithful honors the deity with vows Huan Yuan Hai Yuan or Shu Yuan Shu Yuan, through individual worship, reverence and respect Jing Shen Jing Shen. .The most common display of divine power is the cure of diseases after a believer piously requests aid. Another manifestation is granting a request of children. The deity may also manifest through mediumship, entering the body of a shaman medium and speaking through them. There have been cases of people curing illnesses. On behalf of a god. Ti shen ji bing ti shen ji bing. Gods may also speak to people when they are asleep. Tuo ming tuo meng. Topic: Sociological typology. Wu Xin Chao, 2014, distinguishes four kinds of Chinese traditional religious organization: ancestry worship, deity worship, secret societies, and folk religious sects. Topic. Types of indigenous ethnic religion Topic. Worship of local and national deities Chinese religion in its communal expression involves the worship of gods that are the generative power and tutelary spirit genius loci of a locality or a certain aspect of nature for example water gods, river gods, fire gods, mountain gods, or of gods that are common ancestors of a village, a larger identity, or the Chinese nation Shenong, Wangdi, Pangu. The social structure of this religion is the Shenshei Shen Shi literally, society of a god. Synonymous with Shehui Shi Wei, in which Shi Shi originally meant the altar of a community's earth god, while Wei Wei means association, assembly, church, or gathering. This type of religious trusts can be dedicated to a god which is bound to a single village or temple or to a god which has a wider following, in multiple villages, provinces, or even a national importance. Mao Zedong distinguished god associations, village communities, and temple associations in his analysis of religious trusts. In his words, every kind and type of god Shen can have an association. Wei. For example, the Zhaogong Association, the Guanyin Association, the Guanggong Association, the Dashan Association, the Bogong Association, the Wenchang Association, and the like. Within the category of Wei Mao also distinguished the sacrifice associations which make sacrifices in honor of gods. These societies organize gatherings and festivals participated by members of the whole village or larger community on the occasions of what are believed to be the birthdays of the gods or other events, or to seek protection from droughts, epidemics, and other disasters. Such festivals invoke the power of the gods for practical goals to summon blessings and drive away harm. Special devotional currents within this framework can be identified by specific names such as Mazuism Ma Zhao Mazu Zhao, Wang Yi worship, or the cult of the Silkworm Mother. This type of religion is prevalent in North China, where lineage religion is absent, private, or historically present only within families of southern origin, and patrilineal ties are based on seniority, and villages are composed of people with different surnames. In this context, the deity societies or temple societies function as poles of the civil organism. Often deity societies incorporate entire villages, this is the reason why in North China can be found many villages which are named after deities and their temples, for example Laishanmiao village, Laishanmiao village of the temple of the thunder god, or Mashanmaokan, Ma Shanmiaokan village of the temple of the horse god. Topic. Lineage religion. Another dimension of the Chinese folk religion is based on family or genealogical worship of deities and ancestors in family altars or private temples Simiao si miao or jiamiao jia miao, or ancestral shrines Sitang si tang or zongxiai zongxi, or also zumiao zumiao. Kinship associations or churches congregating people with the same surname and belonging to the same kin, are the social expression of this religion. These lineage societies build temples where the deified ancestors of a certain group for example the Chens or the Lins are enshrined and worshipped. These temples serve as centers of aggregation for people belonging to the same lineage, and the lineage body may provide a context of identification and mutual assistance for individual persons. The construction of large and elaborate ancestral temples traditionally represents a kin's wealth, influence, and achievement. 
Scholar K. S. Yang has explored the ethno political dynamism of this form of religion, through which people who become distinguished for their value and virtue are considered immortal and receive posthumous divine titles, and are believed to protect their descendants, inspiring a mythological lore for the collective memory of a family or kin. If their temples and their deities enshrined acquire popularity, they are considered worthy of the virtue of Ling. Efficacy. Worship of ancestors Jingzu Jingzu is observed nationally with large-scale rituals on Qingming festival and other holidays. This type of religion prevails in South China, where lineage bonds are stronger and the patrilineal hierarchy is not based upon seniority, and access to corporate resources held by a lineage is based upon the equality of all the lines of descent. Topic. Philosophical and ritual modalities Wuism and shamanic traditions The extent to which shamanism pervaded ancient Chinese society, says scholar Paul R. Golden 2005, is a matter of scholarly dispute, but there can be no doubt that many communities relied upon the unique talents of shamans for their quotidian spiritual needs. The Chinese usage distinguishes the Chinese Wu tradition or Wuism, as it was called by Jan Jakob Maria de Groot, Wu Jiao Wu Jiao, properly shamanic, with control over the gods, from the Tongji tradition, Tongji mediumship, without control of the godly movement, and from non-Han Chinese Altaic shamanisms, Sa Man Jiao Sa Man Jiao, that are practiced in northern provinces. According to Andrea Chirita 2014, Confucianism itself, with its emphasis on hierarchy and ancestral rituals, derived from the shamanic discourse of the Shang dynasty. What Confucianism did was to marginalize the dysfunctional features of old shamanism. However, shamanic traditions continued uninterrupted within the folk religion and found precise and functional forms within Taoism. In the Shang and Zhou dynasty, shamans had a role in the political hierarchy, and were represented institutionally by the Ministry of Rites. Da Zong. The emperor was considered the supreme shaman, intermediating between the three realms of heaven, earth, and man. The mission of a shaman Wu Wu is to repair the dysfunctionalities occurred in nature and generated after the sky had been separated from earth." The female shamans called Wu as well as the male shamans called Shi represent the voice of spirits, repair the natural dysfunctions, foretell the future based on dreams and the art of divination. A historical science of the future. Whereas shamans are able to observe the yin and the yang, since the 1980s the practice and study of shamanism has undergone a massive revival in Chinese religion as a means to repair the world to a harmonious whole after industrialization. Shamanism is viewed by many scholars as the foundation for the emergence of civilization, and the shaman as teacher and spirit of peoples. The Chinese Society for Shamanic Studies was founded in Jilin City in 1988. Nuo folk religion is a system of the Chinese folk religion with distinct institutions and cosmology present, especially in central southern China. It arose as an exorcistic religious movement, and it is inter ethnic but also intimately connected to the Tujia people. Topic. Confucianism, Taoism, and orders of ritual masters. Confucianism and Taoism, which are formalized, ritual, doctrinal or philosophical traditions, can be considered both as embedded within the larger category of Chinese religion, or as separate religions. In fact, one can practice certain folk cults and espouse the tenets of Confucianism as a philosophical framework, Confucian theology instructing to uphold the moral order through the worship of gods and ancestors that is the way of connecting to the Tian and awakening to its harmony Li. Right. Folk temples and ancestral shrines on special occasions may choose Confucian liturgy that is called Ru Ru, or sometimes Zheng Tong Zheng Tong, meaning orthoprax, ritual style led by Confucian sages of rites, Li Sheng Li Sheng, who in many cases are the elders of a local community. Confucian liturgies are alternated with Taoist liturgies and popular ritual styles. There are many organized groups of the folk religion that adopt Confucian liturgy and identity, for example, the Way of the Gods according to the Confucian tradition or Phoenix Churches, Luanism, or the Confucian churches, schools, and fellowships such as the Yidan Zetong Yidan Zetang of Beijing, the Mengmutang, Meng Mutang of Shanghai, the Confucian Fellowship Ru Zhao Dao Tan Ru Zhao in northern Fujian, and ancestral temples of the Kong. Confucian 
Confucius lineage operating as well as Confucian teaching churches. In November 2015 a national Holy Confucian Church was established with the contribution of many Confucian leaders. Scholar and Taoist priest Christopher Shipper defines Taoism as a liturgical framework for the development of local religion. Some currents of Taoism are deeply interwoven with the Chinese folk religion, especially the Zhengyi school, developing aspects of local cults within their doctrines. However, Taoists always highlight the distinction between their traditions and those which aren't Taoist. Priests of Taoism are called Daoshi, Daoshi literally meaning masters of the Tao. Otherwise commonly translated simply the Taoists as common followers and folk believers who are not part of Taoist orders are not identified as such. Taoists of the Zhengyi school, who are called Sanju Daoshi, San Ju Daoshi or Huo Ju Daoshi, Huo Ju Daoshi respectively meaning scattered Daoshi and Daoshi living at home hearth. Because they can get married and perform the profession of priests as a part-time occupation, may perform rituals of offering jiao, thanksgiving, propitiation, exorcism and rites of passage for local communities' temples and private homes. Local gods of local cultures are often incorporated into their altars. The Zhengyi Taoists are trained by other priests of the same sect, and historically received formal ordination by the Celestial Master, although the 63rd Celestial Master Zhang Enpu fled to Taiwan in the 1940s during the Chinese Civil War. Lineages of ritual masters fa -shi -fa -shi, also referred to as practitioners of Faism, also called Folk Taoism, or, in Southeast China, Red Taoism operate within the Chinese folk religion but outside any institution of official Taoism. The ritual masters, who have the same role of the Sanju Daoshi within the fabric of society, aren't considered Taoist priests by the Daoshi of Taoism who trace their lineage to the celestial masters and by Taoists officially registered with the state Taoist church. Fashi are defined as of cataphatic filling character in opposition to professional Taoists who are canotic of emptying, or apophatic, character. Topic. Organized folk religious sects China has a long history of sect traditions characterized by a soteriological and eschatological character, often called salvationist religions, which emerged from the common religion but are neither ascribable to the lineage cult of ancestors and progenitors, nor to the communal deity religion of village temples, neighborhood, corporation, or national temples. The 20th century expression of this religions has been studied under Prasenjit Duara's definition of redemptive societies, while modern Chinese scholarship describes them as folk religious sects. Minjian Zong Jiao Minjian Zong Jiao, Minjian Jiao Men Minjian Jiao Men or Minjian Jiao Pai Minjian Jiao Pai, abandoning the ancient derogatory definition of Zijiao, Zai, evil religion. They are characterized by egalitarianism, a foundation through a charismatic figure and a direct divine revelation, a millenarian eschatology and voluntary path of salvation, an embodied experience of the numinous through healing and cultivation, and an expansive orientation through good deeds, evangelism and philanthropy. Their practices are focused on improving morality, body cultivation, and recitation of scriptures. Many of the redemptive religions of the 20th and 21st century aspire to become the repository of the entirety of the Chinese tradition in the face of Western modernism and materialism. This group of religions includes Yiguandao and other sects belonging to the Shantiandao, Xiantian, Way of Former Heaven, Jugongdao, Jugong, Way of the Nine Palaces. Various proliferations of the Luo teaching, the Zaili teaching, and the more recent Te teaching, Weixinist, Zuanyuan and Tiandi teachings, the latter two focused respectively on the worship of Wangdi and the universal god. Also, the Qigong schools are developments of the same religious context, these movements were banned in the early Republican China and later Communist China. Many of them still remain illegal, underground or unrecognized in China, while others, Specifically the De teaching, Tiandi teachings, Zuanyuan teaching, Weixinism and Yiguandao, have developed cooperation with mainland China's academic and non-governmental organizations. The Sanyi teaching is an organized folk religion founded in the 16th century, present in the Putian region of Fujian where it is legally recognized. 
Some of these sects began to register as branches of the State Taoist Association since the 1990s. Another category that has been sometimes confused with that of the sects of salvation by scholars is that of the secret societies, Wei Dao Men Huidaomen, Mimi Shi Wei Mimi Shehui, or Mimi Jie Shi Mimi Jishe. They are religious communities of initiatory and secretive character, including rural militias such as the Red Spears, Hong Chang Wei and the Big Knives, Da Dao Wei, and fraternal organizations such as the Green Gangs, Qing Bang, and the Elder Societies. Gay Lao. They became very popular in the early Republican period and often labeled as heretical doctrines. Zhang Jiao Yi Duan, Zhang Jiao Yi Duan. Recent scholarship has created the label of secret sects. Mimi Jiao Men Mimi Jiao Men to distinguish the peasant secret societies with a positive dimension of the Yuan, Ming and Qing periods, from the negatively viewed secret societies of the early republic that became instruments of anti-revolutionary forces the Guomingdang or Japan, a further distinctive type of sects of the folk religion, that are possibly the same as the positive secret sects, are the martial sects. They combine two aspects, the Wen Cheng, Wen Cheng cultural field. That is the doctrinal aspect characterized by elborate cosmologies, theologies, initiatory and ritual patterns, and that is usually kept secretive, and the wucheng martial field. That is the body cultivation practice and that is usually the public face of the sect. They were outlawed by Ming imperial edicts that continued to be enforced until the fall of the Qing dynasty in the 20th century. An example of martial sect is Miwaism Miwa Jiao Miwa Jiao, plum flowers. That has become very popular throughout northern China. In Taiwan, virtually all of the redemptive societies operate freely since the late 1980s. Tiandi teachings The Tiandi teachings is a religion that encompasses two branches, the Holy Church of the Heavenly Virtue and the Church of the Heavenly Deity both emerged from the techings of Xiao Changming and Li Yuji, disseminated in the early 20th century. The latter is actually an outgrowth of the former established in the 1980s, the religion's focus on the worship of Tiandi, Tiandi the Heavenly Deity, or Heavenly Emperor on health through the proper cultivation of qi, and teach a style of qigong named Tianren qigong. According to scholars, Tiandi teachings derive from the Taoist tradition of Huishan, where Li Yuji studied for eight years. The Church of the Heavenly Deity is very active both in Taiwan and mainland China, where it has high-level links. Weixenism <laughs> <laughs> Weixenism Chinese, Wai Xin Sheng Jiao, Pinyin, Weixin Sheng Jiao, literally, Holy Religion of the Only Heart, or simply Wai Xin Jiao, Wai Xin Jiao is a religion primarily focused on the orthodox lineages of Yijing and Feng Shui, the hundred schools of thought, and worship of the three great ancestors, Wangdi, Yandi, and Qiyu. The movement promotes the restoration of the authentic roots of the Chinese civilization and Chinese reunification. The Weixinist Church, whose headquarters are in Taiwan, is also active in mainland China in the key birthplaces of the Chinese culture. It has links with the government of Henan, where it has established the City of Eight Trigrams Templar complex on Yunmeng Mountain of the Yan Mountains, and it has also built temples in Hebei. Topic. Geographic and ethnic variations Topic. North and South divides Vincent Gussert has recently 2011 published a review of scholarly works which study North China folk religion as a distinct phenomenon. In contrast to the folk religion of southern and southeastern provinces which is primarily focused on the lineages and their churches focusing on ancestral gods, the folk religion of central northern China, North China Plain predominantly hinges on the communal worship of tutelary deities of creation and nature as identity symbols by villages populated by families of different surnames, structured into communities of the gods, or Wei Wei, association. 
which organize temple ceremonies involving processions and pilgrimages, and led by indigenous ritual masters who are often hereditary and linked to secular authority. Northern and southern folk religions also have a different pantheon, of which the northern one is composed of more ancient gods of Chinese mythology. Furthermore, folk religious sects have historically been more successful in the Central Plains and in the northeastern provinces than in southern China, and central northern folk religion shares characteristics of some of the sects, such as the heavy importance of mother goddess worship and shamanism, as well as their scriptural transmission. Confucian churches as well have historically found much resonance among the population of the Northeast. In the 1930s, the Universal Church of the Way and its virtue alone aggregated at least 25% of the population of the state of Manchuria, and contemporary Shandong has been analyzed as an area of rapid growth of folk Confucian groups. Along the southeastern coast, ritual functions of the folk religion are reportedly dominated by Taoism, both in registered and unregistered forms, Zhengyi Taoism and unrecognized Fashi orders, which which since the 1990s has developed quickly in the area. Gusser talks of this distinction, although recognizing it as an oversimplification, of a Taoist South and a village religion, Confucian center North, with the northern context also characterized by important orders of folk Taoist ritual masters, one of which are the Yin Yang Sheng Yin Yang Sheng, sages of Yin and Yang and sectarian traditions, and also by a low influence of Buddhism and official Taoism, the folk religion of northeast China has unique characteristics deriving from the interaction of Han religion with Tungus and Manchu shamanisms, these include Chumaxian riding for the immortals, shamanism, the worship of foxes and other zoomorphic deities, and the fox gods Hu Shen Hushan, Great Lord of the Three Foxes Hu San Tai Ye Hu San Tai Ye, and the Great Lady of the Three Foxes Hu San Tai Nai Hu San Tai Nai, at the head of pantheons. Otherwise, in the religious context of Inner Mongolia there has been a significant integration of Han Chinese into the traditional folk religion of the region. In recent years there has also been an assimilation of deities from Tibetan folk religion, especially wealth gods. In Tibet, across broader western China, and in Inner Mongolia, there has been a growth of the cult of Jesser with the explicit support of the Chinese government. Across ethnic Han Tibetan, Mongol and Manchu deity the Han identify him as an aspect of the god of war analogically with Guandi and culture hero whose mythology is embodied as a culturally important epic poem. Topic. Taoist. Indigenous religions of ethnic minorities. Chinese religion has both influenced, and in turn has been influenced by, indigenous religions of ethnic groups that the Han Chinese have encountered along their ethnogenetic history. Siwert finds evidence of pre-Chinese religions in the folk religion of certain southeastern provinces such as Fujian and Taiwan, especially in the local Wu and lineages of ordained ritual masters, a process of sinicization, or more appropriately a Taoization is also the more recent experience of the indigenous religions of some distinct ethnic minorities of China, especially southwestern people. Chinese Taoists gradually penetrate within the indigenous religions of such peoples, in some cases working side by side with indigenous priests, in other cases taking over the latter's function and integrating them by requiring their ordination as Taoists. Usually, indigenous ritual practices remain unaffected and are adopted into Taoist liturgy, while indigenous gods are identified with Chinese gods. Siwert discusses this phenomenon of merger into Chinese folk religion, not as a mere elimination of non-Chinese indigenous religions, but rather as a cultural reorientation. Local priests of southwestern ethnic minorities often acquire prestige by identifying themselves as Taoists and adopting Taoist holy texts. Mo 2012 writes that Taoism has formed an indissoluble bond with indigenous religions of southwestern ethnic minorities, especially the Tujia, Yi and Yao. Siwert mentions the Miao of Hunan. Daogongism is Taoism among the Zhuang, directed by the Daogong, Dao lords of the Dao and it forms an established important aspect of the broader Zhuang folk religion. On the other hand, it is also true that in more recent years there has been a general revival of indigenous lineages of ritual masters without identification of these as Taoists and support from the state Chinese Taoist church. An example is the revival of lineages of Bimo, scripture sages, priests among the Yi peoples. Bimoism has a tradition of theological literature and though clergy ordination, and this is among the reasons why it is taken in high consideration by the Chinese government. 
Bamo Ayi attests that, "...since the early 1980s minority policy turned away from promoting assimilation of Han ways." Topic. Features Topic. Theory of hierarchy and divinity Chinese religions are polytheistic, meaning that many deities are worshipped as part of what has been defined as Yuzhou Shen Lun, Yuzhou Shen Lun translated as cosmotheism, a worldview in which divinity is inherent to the world itself. The gods Shen Shen, growth, beings that give birth are interwoven energies or principles that generate phenomena which reveal or reproduce the way of heaven, that is to say the order li of the Great Nine tian. .In Chinese tradition, there is not a clear distinction between the gods and their physical body or bodies from stars to trees and animals, the qualitative difference between the two seems not to have ever been emphasized. Rather, the disparity is said to be more quantitative than qualitative. In doctrinal terms, the Chinese view of gods is related to the understanding of qi, the life force, as the gods and their phenomenal productions are manifestations of it. In this way, all natural bodies are believed to be able to attain supernatural attributes by acting according to the universal oneness. Meanwhile, acting wickedly that is to say against the tian and its order brings to disgrace and disaster. In folk religions, gods shen and immortals xian xian are not specifically distinguished from each other. Gods can incarnate in human form and human beings can reach immortality, which means to attain higher spirituality, since all the spiritual principles gods are begotten of the primordial qi before any physical manifestation. In the Doctrine of the Mean, one of the Confucian Four Books, the Zhenren wise is the man who has achieved a spiritual status developing his true sincere nature. This status, in turn, enables him to fully develop the true nature of others and of all things. The sage is able to assist the transforming and nourishing process of heaven and earth, forming a trinity sankai sankai, the three powers, with them. In other words, in the Chinese tradition humans are or can be the medium between heaven and earth, and have the role of completing what had been initiated. Taoist schools in particular espouse an explicit spiritual pathway which pushes the earthly beings to the edge of eternity. Since the human body is a microcosm, enlivened by the universal order of yin and yang like the whole cosmos, the means of immortality can be found within oneself. Among those worshipped as immortal heroes xian, exalted beings, are historical individuals distinguished for their worth or bravery, those who taught crafts to others and formed societies establishing the order of heaven, ancestors or progenitors zu zu, and the creators of a spiritual tradition. The concept of human divinity is not self-contradictory, as there is no unbridgeable gap between the two realms, rather, the divine and the human are mutually contained, in comparison with gods of an environmental nature, who tend to remain stable throughout human experience and history, individual human deities change in time. Some endure for centuries, while others remain localized cults, or vanish after a short time. Immortal beings are conceived as constellations of chi which is so vibrant in certain historical individuals that, upon the person's death, this qi nexus does not dissipate but persists, and is reinforced by living people's worship. The energetic power of a god is thought to reverberate on the worshippers influencing their fortune. Topic. Deities and immortals Gods and immortals collectively in the Chinese cultural tradition reflect a hierarchical, multiperspective experience of divinity. In Chinese language there is a terminological distinction between shen shen, di di and xian xian. Although the usage of the former two is sometimes blurred, it corresponds to the distinction in Western cultures between God and deity, Latin genius meaning a generative principle, spirit and deus or divus, d, sometimes translated as theurch, implies a manifested or incarnate, godly, power. It is etymologically and figuratively analogous to the concept of d as the base of a fruit, which falls and produces other fruits. This analogy is attested in the Shuowen Jiezi explaining, deity, as, what faces the base of a melon fruit. The latter term xian xian unambiguously means a man who has reached immortality, similarly to the Western idea of hero. Many classical books have lists and hierarchies of gods and immortals, among which the completed record of deities and immortals 
of the Ming Dynasty, and the Biographies of Deities and Immortals by Zhe Hong 284 There's also the older Liaxian Zuan collected biographies of immortals. There are the great cosmic gods representing the first principle in its unmanifested state or its creative order. Yudi, Yudi, Jade Deity, and Dumu, Dome, Mother of the Meaning, or Great Chariot. Pangu, Pangu, the macranthropic metaphor of the cosmos. Ziwingmu, Shi Wangmu, Queen Mother of the West, and Dongwanggong, Dongwang, King Duke of the East, who personificate respectively the yin and the yang, as well as the dimensional three patrons and the five deities. Then there are the sky and weather gods, the scenery gods, the vegetal and animal gods, and gods of human virtues and crafts. These are interpreted in different ways in Taoism and folk sects, the former conferring them long cataphatic names. Below the great deities, there is the unquantifiable number of gods of nature, as every phenomena have or are gods. The three patrons San Huang San Wang, Fuxi, Nua and Shenong, are the vertical Manifestation of the primordial god corresponding to the three realms San Jia San Ji, representing the yin and yang and the medium between them, that is the human being, the five deities Wu Di Wu Di or five forms of the highest deity, Wu Fang Shang Di Wu Fang Shang Di, the yellow, green or blue, black, red and white deities, are the five horizontal manifestations of the primordial god and according with the three realms they have a celestial, a terrestrial and a thonic form. They correspond to the five phases of creation, the five constellations rotating around the celestial pole, the five sacred mountains and the five directions of space the four cardinal directions and the center, and the five dragon gods Long Shen Long Shen which represent their mounts, that is to say the thonic forces they preside over. The yellow god Huang Shen Wang Shen or yellow god of the northern dipper Huang Shen Beidou Wang Shen Beidou is of peculiar importance, as he is a form of the universal god Tian or Shangdi, symbolizing the axis Mundi Kunlun, or the intersection between the three patrons and the five deities, that is the center of the cosmos. He is therefore described in the Shizi as the yellow emperor with four faces. Huang Di Simian Wang Di Simian. His human incarnation, the yellow emperor or deity of the mysterious origin. Zan Yuan Huang Di Zuanyuan Wang Di, is said to be the creator of the Waxia civility, of marriage and morality, language and lineage, and patriarch of all the Chinese together with the Red Deity. Zuanyuan was the fruit of virginal birth, as his mother Fubao conceived him as she was aroused, while walking in the country, by a lightning from the Big Dipper. Topic. Mother Goddess Worship The worship of mother goddesses for the cultivation of offspring is present all over China, but predominantly in northern provinces. There are nine main goddesses, and all of them tend to be considered as manifestations or attendant forces of a singular goddess identified variously as Bixia, by Blue Dawn, the daughter or female consort of the green god of Mount Tai, or Hutu, Hutu the queen of the earth. Bixia herself is identified by Taoists as the more ancient goddess Zuingmu. Goddesses are commonly entitled Mu, Mother, Laomu, Lao, Mu, Old Mother, Shangmu, Shang, Mu, Holy Mother, Niangnang, Niangnya, Lady, Ninai, Nai, Granny. Altars of goddess worship are usually arranged with Bixia at the center and two goddesses at her sides, most frequently the Lady of Eyesight and the Lady of Offspring. A different figure but with the same astral connections as Bixia is the Kixing Niangnang, Qi Xing Niangnya, Goddess of the Seven Stars. There is also the cluster of the Holy Mothers of the Three Skies, San Shao Sheng Mu Sang Xiao Sheng Mu, or Ladies of the Three Skies. San Shao Niang Niang Sang Xiao Niangnang, composed of Yang Xiao Gunang, Chang Xiao Gunang, and Bi Xiao Gunang. In southeastern provinces the cult of Chen Jinggu Shen Jinggu is identified by some scholars as an emanation of the northern cult of Bixia. There are other local goddesses with motherly features, including the northern Kanmu Silkworm Mother, and Mazu Ma Ancestral Mother, popular in provinces along the eastern coast and in Taiwan. The title of Queen of Heaven Tian Hu Tianao, is most frequently attributed to Mazu and Dumu, the cosmic goddess. Topic. Worship and modalities of religious practice 
Adam Yu Chow identifies five styles or modalities of doing Chinese religion. Discursive scriptural, involving the composition, preaching, and recitation of texts, classics, Taoist scriptures and morality books. Personal cultivation mode, involving a long-term cultivation and transformation of oneself with the goal of becoming a Xi'an Xi'an immortal, Zhenren Zhenren, true person, or Shengren, wise, through the practice of different technologies of the self. Qigong Qigong, Taoist inner and outer alchemy, charitable acts for merit, memorization and recitation of texts. Liturgical, involving elaborate ritual procedures conducted by specialists of rites Taoist rites, Confucian rites, Nuo rites, Feng Shui Feng Shui. Immediate practical, aiming at quick efficacious ling ling results through simple ritual and magical techniques divination, talismans, divine medicine, consulting media and shamans. Relational, emphasizing the devotional relationship between men and deities and among men themselves organizing elaborate sacrifices, making vows, organizing temple festivals, pilgrimages, processions, and religious communities in social comings and goings, laywing lai wang, and interconnectedness. Guangxi Guangxi, generally speaking, the Chinese believe that spiritual and material well-being ensues from the harmony of humanity and gods in their participation in the same cosmic power, and also believe that by taking the right path and practice anybody is able to reach the absolute reality. Religious practice is therefore regarded as the bridge to link the human world to the spiritual source, maintaining the harmony of the micro and macrocosmos, protecting the individual and the world from disruption. In this sense, the Chinese view of human life is not deterministic, but one is a master of his own life and can choose to collaborate with the deities for a harmonious world. Chinese culture being a holistic system, in which every aspect is a part of a whole, Chinese folk religious practice is often intermingled with political, educational and economic concerns. A gathering or event may be encompassed with all of these aspects. In general, the commitment belief and the process or right practice together form the internal and external dimensions of Chinese religious life. In village communities, religious services are often organized and led by local people themselves. Leaders are usually selected among male heads of families or lineages, or village heads. A simple form of individual practice is to show respect for the gods jing shen jing shen, through jingshong incense offering, and the exchange of vows huan yuan hai yuan. Sacrifice can consist of incense, oil, and candles, as well as money. Religious devotion may also express in the form of performance troops Hawaii, involving many types of professionals such as stilt walkers, lion dancers, musicians, martial arts masters, yang dancers, and story tellers. Deities can also be respected through moral deeds in their name and self-cultivation Some forms of folk religion develop clear prescriptions for believers, such as detailed lists of meritorious and sinful deeds in the form of morality books. Shanshu Shan Shu and ledgers of merit and demerit. Involvement in the affairs of communal or intra-village temples are perceived by believers as ways for accumulating merit gong gong day. Virtue is believed to accumulate in one's heart, which is seen as energetic center of the human body zai jun shin zuo tian fu zai jun shin zuo fu tian. Practices of communication with the gods comprehend different forms of Chinese shamanism, such as wu shamanism and tongji mediumship, or fuji practice. Topic. Sacrifices Classical Chinese has characters for different types of sacrifice, probably the oldest way to communicate with divine forces, today generally encompassed by the definition GC GC. However different in scale and quantity, all types of sacrifice would normally involve food, wine, meat and later incense. Sacrifices usually differ according to the kind of deity they are devoted to. Traditionally, cosmic and nature gods are offered uncooked or whole food, while ancestors are offered cooked food. Moreover, sacrifices for gods are made inside the temples that enshrine them, while sacrifices for ancestors are made outside temples. Yearly sacrifices G are made to Confucius, the Red and Yellow Emperors, and other cultural heroes and ancestors, both in past history and at the present. All sacrifices are assigned with both religious and political purposes. Some gods are considered carnivorous, for example the river god and dragon gods, and offering to them requires animal sacrifice. Thanksgiving and redeeming 
The aims of rituals and sacrifices may be of thanksgiving and redeeming, usually involving both. Various sacrifices are intended to express gratitude toward the gods in the hope that spiritual blessing and protection will continue. The Jiao Jiao, an elaborate Taoist sacrifice or rite of universal salvation, is intended to be a cosmic community renewal, that is to say a reconciliation of a community around its spiritual center. The Jiao ritual usually starts with Jai, fasting and purification, that is meant as an atonement for evil doing, then followed by sacrificial offerings. This rite, of great political importance, can be intended for the whole nation. In fact, as early as the Song dynasty, emperors asked renowned Taoists to perform such rituals on their behalf or for the entire nation. The modern Chinese Republic has given approval for Taoists to conduct such rituals since the 1990s, with the aim of protecting the country and the nation. Topic. Rites of passage A variety of practices are concerned with personal well-being and spiritual growth. Rites of passage are intended to narrate the holy significance of each crucial change throughout a life course. These changes, which are physical and social and at the same time spiritual, are marked by elaborate customs and religious rituals, in the holistic view about nature and the human body and life, as macro and microcosmos, the life process of a human being is equated with the rhythm of seasons and cosmic changes. Hence, birth is likened to spring, youth to summer, maturity to autumn and old age to winter. There are ritual passages for those who belong to a religious order of priests or monks, and there are the rituals of the stages in a life, the main four being birth, adulthood, marriage and death. Topic. Places of worship Chinese language has a variety of words defining the temples of the Chinese religion. Some of these terms have a precise functional use, although with time some confusion has arisen and some of them have been used interchangeably in some contexts. Collective names defining temples or places of worship are si miao si miao and miao yu mao yu, however, si si, which originally meant a type of residence for imperial officials, with the introduction of Buddhism in China became associated with Buddhist monasteries as many officials donated their residences to the monks. Today si and si yuan si yuan monastery are used almost exclusively for buddhist monasteries with sporadic exceptions and si is a component character of names for chinese mosques another term now mostly associated with buddhism is an in thatched hut originally a form of dwelling of monks later extended to mean monasteries temples can be public private si miao, si miao, and household temples jia miao, jia miao. the jing jing is a broader territory of a god a geographic region or a village or city with its surroundings, marked by multiple temples or complexes of temples and delineated by the processions, pertaining to Chinese religion the most common term is miao miao graphically meaning a shrine or sacred enclosure. It is the general Chinese term that is translated with the general western temple and is used for temples of any of the deities of polytheism. Other terms include dian dian which indicates the house of a god, enshrining one specific god, usually a chapel within a larger temple or sacred enclosure, and tan tan which means altar, and refers to any indoor or outdoor altars, majestic outdoor altars being those for the worship of heaven and earth and other gods of the environment. Gong Gong, originally referring to imperial palaces, became associated to temples of representations of the universal god or the highest gods and consorts, such as the Queen of Heaven. Another group of words is used for the temples of ancestral religion, cc either temple or shrine, meaning a sacred enclosure or zongsi zongsi i, ancestor shrine. These terms are also used for temples dedicated to immortal beings. Zumiao Zumiao original temple instead refers to a temple which is believed to be the original temple of a deity the most legitimate and powerful tang tang meaning hall or church hall originally referred to the central hall of secular buildings but it entered religious usage as a place of worship of the folk religious sects christianity in china has borrowed this term from the sects guan guan is the appropriate chinese translation of the western term temple as both refer to contemplation of the divine, according to the astral patterns in the sky or the icon of a deity. Together with its extension Dao Guan Dao Gan, to contemplate or observe the Dao, 
It is used exclusively for Taoist temples and monasteries of the state Taoist Church. Generic terms include Yuan Yuan, meaning sanctuary, from the secular usage for a courtyard, college, or hospital institution, Yan Yan, rock, and Dong Dong, hole, cave, referring to temples set up in caves or on cliffs. Other generic terms are Fu Fu, house, originally of imperial officials, which is a rarely used term, and Ting Ting, pavilion which refers to the areas of a temple where laypeople can stay. There is also Shen Si Shen Shi, shrine of a god. Ancestral shrines are sacred places in which lineages of related families, identified by shared surnames, worship their common progenitors. These temples are the collective representation of a group, and function as centers where religious, social and economic activities intersect. Chinese temples are traditionally built according to the styles and materials wood and bricks of Chinese architecture, and this continues to be the rule for most of the new temples. However, in the early 20th century and especially in the mainland religious revival of the early 21st century, there has been a proliferation of new styles in temple construction. These include the use of new materials stones and concrete, stainless steel and glass and the combination of Chinese traditional shapes with styles of the West or of transnational modernity. Examples can be found in the large ceremonial complexes of mainland China. Topic. Temple networks and gatherings Fenshong Fenshong, meaning an incense division is a term that defines both hierarchical networks of temples dedicated to a god, and the ritual process by which these networks form. These temple networks are economic and social bodies, and in certain moments of history have even taken military functions. They also represent routes of pilgrimage, with communities of devotees from the affiliated temples going up in the hierarchy to the senior temple Zumiao. .When a new temple dedicated to the same god is founded, it enters the network through the ritual of division of incense. This consists in filling the incense burner of the new temple with ashes brought from the incense burner of an existing temple. The new temple is therefore spiritually affiliated to the older temple where the ashes were taken, and directly below it in the hierarchy of temples, Miao Wei Miaowei, literally, gatherings at the temple, are collective rituals to greet the gods. Ying Shen Sai Wei Ying Shen Sei that are held at the temples on various occasions such as the Chinese New Year or the birthday or holiday of the god enshrined in the temple. In North China they are also called Sai Wei Sei Wei, communal ritual gatherings, or Shang Wei Shang Wei, incense gatherings, while a Sai Shi Sei She, communal ritual body is the association which organizes such events and by extension it has become another name of the event itself. Activities include rituals, theatrical performances, processions of the god's images throughout villages and cities, and offerings to the temples. In North China temple gatherings are generally weeklong and large events attracting tens of thousands of people, while in South China they tend to be smaller and village-based events. Topic. Demographics. Topic. Mainland China and Taiwan According to Yang and Hu 2012, Chinese folk religion deserves serious research and better understanding in the social scientific study of religion. This is not only because of the sheer number of adherents, several times more adherents than Christians and Buddhists combined, but also because folk religion may have significant social and political functions in China's transition. According to their research, 55.5% of the adult population 15 plus of China, or 578 million people in absolute numbers, believe and practice folk religions, including a 20% who practice ancestor religion or communal worship of deities, and the rest who practice what Yang and Hu define individual. Folk religions like devotion to specific gods such as Kaishen. Members of folk religious sects are not taken into account. Around the same year, Kenneth Dean estimates 680 million people involved in folk religion, or 51% of the total population. At the same time, self-identified folk religion believers in Taiwan are 42. 7% of the adult 20 plus population, or 16 million people in absolute numbers, although devotion to ancestors and gods can be found even among other religions believers or 88% of the population. 
According to the 2005 census of Taiwan, Taoism is the statistical religion of 33% of the population. The Chinese Spiritual Life Survey, conducted by the Center on Religion and Chinese Society of Purdue University, published in 2010, found that 754 million people .2 practice ancestor religion, but only 216 million people believe in the existence of the ancestor. The same survey says that 173 million practice Chinese folk religion in a Taoist framework. The China Family Panel Studies Survey of 2012, published in 2014, based on the Chinese General Social Surveys, which are held on robust samples of tens of thousands of people, found that only 12.6% of the population of China belongs to its five state sanctioned religious groups, while among the rest of the population, only 6.3% are atheists, and the remaining 81%. Billion people pray to or worship gods and ancestors in the manner of the traditional popular religion. The same survey has found that 2.2% approximately equals 30 million of the total population declares to be affiliated to one or another of the many folk religious sects. At the same time, reports of the Chinese government claim that the sects have about the same number of followers of the five state-sanctioned religions counted together approximately 13% approximately equals 180 million. Topic. Economy of temples and rituals Scholars have studied the economic dimension of Chinese folk religion, whose rituals and temples interweave a form of grassroots socio-economic capital for the well-being of local communities, fostering the circulation of wealth and its investment in the sacred capital. Of temples, gods, and ancestors, this religious economy already played a role in periods of imperial China, plays a significant role in modern Taiwan, and is seen as a driving force in the rapid economic development in parts of rural China, especially the southern and eastern coasts. According to Law, 2005, in his study about the relationship between the revival of folk religion and the reconstruction of patriarchal civilization. Similar to the case in Taiwan, the practice of folk religion in rural southern China, particularly in the Pearl River Delta, has thrived as the economy has developed. In contrast to Weberian predictions, these phenomena suggest that drastic economic development in the Pearl River Delta may not lead to total disenchantment with beliefs concerning magic in the cosmos. On the contrary, the revival of folk religions in the Delta region is serving as a countervailing re-embedding force from the local cultural context, leading to the coexistence of the world of enchantments and the modern world." Young Mayfair 2007 defines it as an "...embedded capitalism," which preserves local identity and autonomy, and an "...ethical capitalism." in which the drive for individual accumulation of money is tempered by religious and kinship ethics of generosity which foster the sharing and investment of wealth in the construction of civil society. Overseas Chinese Most of the overseas Chinese populations have maintained Chinese folk religions, often adapting to the new environment by developing new cults and incorporating elements of local traditions. In Southeast Asia, Chinese deities are subject to a re-territorialization and maintain their relation to the ethnic associations i.e. the Hainanese Association or the Fujianese Association, each of them has a patron deity and manages one or more temples of such a deity. The most important deity among Southeast Asian Chinese is Mazu, the Queen of Heaven and Goddess of the Sea. This is related to the fact that most of these Chinese populations are from southeastern provinces of China, where the goddess is very popular. Some folk religious sects have spread successfully among Southeast Asian Chinese. They include especially Church of Virtue Deism, Zhengkongdao and Yiguandao. See also Notes Topic References Topic Citations Topic Sources Topic External Links China Ancestral Temples Network Board in Heaven, a documentary on the reinvention of Chinese religion and Taoism. By Kenneth Dean, 2010, 80 Minutes.